If I install this part of my vehicle, will it affect or even void my warranty? That is one of the most common questions I get asked. And in this episode of Reignited, I'm going to take you behind the scenes to a dealership process to show you exactly what factors are involved and how it might affect you when you install different parts in your vehicle. Stay with me. If this is your first time watching one of Reignited's videos, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. My name is Sky. I've been an automotive service technician for the last 10 years but I worked for dealerships for the last 18 years. So I have a pretty good sense of how the whole process works. In fact, about six of those years, I was what's called a warranty administrator. So when you have warranty work done on your vehicle at a dealership, the dealership pays for that work out of pocket. They then have to file a claim with the manufacturer to be reimbursed for that work. Think of it very much like an insurance claim, same type of idea. You're filing a claim with the manufacturer to get that money back. Now, as you can imagine in that process, there is a large set of rules involved about what we can and cannot do. That's where this comes in about whether you're installing an aftermarket part will affect that warranty or not. And the answer is, it all depends. I know exactly the answer you're looking for, right? But really what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna dive down deep into some specific scenarios, hopefully set your mind at ease about putting certain parts on your car. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break this video into two parts. First part, we're going to be talking about factory warranty only. And then the second part, we're going to be talking about extended warranties, whether it's a factory extended warranty or an aftermarket extended warranty. So the strict letter of the law when it comes to aftermarket modifications is this. If we at the dealership can prove with reasonable certainty that this part that you installed then caused a premature failure of a factory part, then we can deny warranty coverage. So as you can imagine with that kind of a definition, that there's a rather large gray area there. I mean, how can a dealership be reasonably certain that that part that you installed is causing the premature failure? Well, to be honest, the manufacturers leave that largely up to the dealership's discretion. What you want to do is you want to take the decision as much out of the dealer's hands as you can. That's why there's so much uncertainty about it. That's why you're watching this video right now. People are unsure. Hey, is this going to affect my warranty or is it not? And that leads me to my most important point I want to share with you in this video. So something that can have a massive impact on whether or not your vehicle will be covered through warranty repairs, even with aftermarket components, is something that many people will overlook. And that is your relationship with the dealership. Now I'm going to give you two scenarios here. In the first scenario, you purchased your vehicle from a different dealership entirely because they gave you a better deal than your local dealership. Now let's say that you either do all of your own maintenance work or you have another shop somewhere in the area do your maintenance work. The only time you come to the dealer is when you have a little warranty issue here or a little warranty issue there. Now when you bring it in for a major warranty issue and you have some modifications done to your vehicle, the dealer could very well say, eh, I think because of these parts that you installed that affected this, we're not gonna go ahead and cover this under warranty. And you really don't have much of a leg to stand on because the manufacturer is going to back the dealership in that situation. All right, scenario two. Let's say that you purchased the vehicle directly from the dealership. You've done all your maintenance work through that dealership as well. And most importantly, they think that you might be buying vehicles from them in the future as well. In this case, I've literally seen dealers bend over backwards to cover things under warranty that they normally would have no chance of getting coverage for. So again, huge, huge factor here that many people overlook, your relationship with your dealer. Now, when I'm talking about a relationship with the dealer, I'm not talking about just a relationship with your salesman. Those salesmen have no control, impact, import, influence, anything over the service department. None, none whatsoever. It, oftentimes you'll see them fighting at cross purposes to each other, which makes no sense because they work for the same company. No, what I'm talking about is have a relationship with the service department itself. And the only way to do that is by bringing your vehicle in for consistent service, maintenance items, things like that. If you do, you'll start to develop a relationship with not only the service manager, but also a specific service writer. And once you develop that relationship, kind of that rapport and show them that you are a loyal customer and that you will be having some repeat business and bringing in some money to the dealership. At that point, guys, I've seen dealers help out people even when standard warranty situations wouldn't apply. Now, am I saying that's right? No, I'm not. I, I don't think that's right at all, I, but that's just the way the world works, right? It's a quid pro quo. What can you do for me? Then I'll see what I can do for you. That's how the system works. So let's discuss a few warranty situations that might get you into a little bit of trouble. Let's say you install an aftermarket exhaust on your vehicle. Okay, well, if you are bypassing the catalytic converters, then yes, you're going to have some problems there. But if it's just an after cat style exhaust system, 
no issue. I can't think of any situation in which that would impact your vehicle's drivability and cause a premature failure of an engine component or something like that. Now let's say that you have a big truck and you put a six inch lift and a 37 inch tires on there. All right, so that is where you start to toe the line a little bit more because let's say that your upper ball joints are starting to go out, they're starting to clunk. Well, we could easily make the case in that situation that the extra rotational mass of a 37 inch tire and a big old wheel on there has caused more stress than the system was designed for and caused for a premature failure. Easy call on that one. However, it gets a little bit more gray area where let's say that you burned up overdrive in your transmission and you have that same six inch lift and 35 or 37 inch tires, let's say. Now's when we could get into a situation where we could say, well, the additional stress of the larger tires essentially changes the gear ratio of the vehicle. It puts additional load on the overdrive system and it burned up the trans. This is a tricky one, guys, and that's the sort of thing where it is left up to a little bit of the dealer's discretion. So, it depends on attitude too. I'm, I'm gonna say that right now. It's a real big thing about attitude. If you come in and say, this is what happened, I hope you guys can help me out. We're gonna look at you one way. If you come in and say, I demand that you take care of this issue, this is, should not happen, this should be covered under warranty, and you're just raising a racket about it, I gotta be honest, me personally, I'm not inclined to help that kind of a person out because that's the sort of person who blusters their way to getting things done for them, and I don't, I don't like people like that, I don't appreciate that. If you come to me and legitimately say, hey, I didn't think that any of this stuff that I did would cause these problems, I've always driven this thing in a respectful way. I'm more inclined to help you out because I like to help people who need that help. Now, something that will get you into trouble is PCM flash programming. Now, you need to be really, really careful with this because that's definitely making the engine operate outside of the parameters for which it was designed. No matter if it's an improvement in many ways, we could easily say that the reason this part failed or that part failed was because of this non-factory programming. Now, something that a lot of people do to get around this is that they will flash the vehicle back to stock before they bring the vehicle into the dealer. Guys, there's two things wrong with that scenario. One, if you are bringing the vehicle in to correct a certain issue that is happening, we need the vehicle in the exact situation it's in when the problem happens. If you change anything, there's a good chance that when we bring it in, we won't be able to duplicate that problem anymore. Now, the second thing that's wrong with that scenario is that it assumes that I am an imbecile. <laughs> I am not able to tell when a vehicle has been flashed back to stock. Trust me, guys, I can tell. This is what I do for a living, and it irritates me when people assume that I won't know. I can actually go into the PCM data, I can see just how many times a vehicle has been flashed, and I can see just how recently it's been flashed as well. Nothing bothers me more when people try to sneak stuff by me. That just, that just irritates me. But if you come to me up front and say, hey, the vehicle has a tune on it, it's got this, that, or the other, I'm not going to immediately say, well, you know, it's not covered by warranty then. No, my goal is to actually fix your vehicle, and to do so, I need all of the information I have. If you're trying to hide stuff from me, that just makes me mad, and then at that point, I'm gonna look for reasons to say, hey, this isn't covered because of this, that, or the other. But if you come to me up front and say, this is what it's doing, then I can look at it and see and be like, hey, the tune had nothing to do with that part that failed. Don't worry about it, we'll cover it. So we're talking here, it's not just up to the dealer's discretion, but it's up to the technician's discretion as well. For my part, honesty is always the better part. Come to me with the truth and I'll do the best I can to get it taken care of for you. All right, so that pretty much covers things for the factory warranty side. Now I wanna discuss aftermarket warranties and what sort of effect adding modifications can have on that. Now, when I'm talking about an aftermarket warranty here, I don't mean one of the manufacturer extended warranties. I'm talking about the true aftermarket warranties, which are completely separate from the manufacturer. If you have one of these warranties, they can cost $2,500, $3,500, $4,500 for some comprehensive warranty coverage. Now, if you are thinking about doing any sort of modifications to your vehicle, if you have one of these warranties, don't. My advice to you, don't touch your car as long as you have one of these warranties. Now, another name for extended warranties are service contracts. Think about that word there, contract. That means that you signed a legally binding agreement. Problem is, most people do not actually read their service contract to find out not only what's covered, what's not covered, but also the exclusions that can be had if you modify your vehicle. 
In the vast majority of these aftermarket warranty companies that I've seen, if you modify your vehicle in any way other than stock, they can void that contract. And I'm not talking about things that directly affect the failed component like I am with a factory warranty. No, if you have any sort of modifications in many situations, they can void the entire contract. And I'm talking even small modifications as well. I'll give you a specific example. One time I was working on a 2012 Dodge Ram 1500. He was having a problem with his engine that was clearly something that should have been covered under a service contract, but he had aftermarket traction bars in the rear of the truck. Now, let me ask you, how in the world could these traction bars cause an engine failure on the truck? Realistically, there's no way you could prove that whatsoever. However, the service contract stated that if the, the suspension was not in its stock form, that they could then void the service contract. So that's exactly what happened. They took pictures of the situation and they informed the customer that his repair was declined. Now, this is something that he probably paid $3,500 for this contract and then they told him, sorry bud, you're out of luck because basically you didn't read the fine print. Now, I don't agree with that in any way, shape or form, but again, I'm telling you, this is the situation. If you have an aftermarket service contract, I want you to go through it right now and read every single line of that contract and see what you can and cannot do to that vehicle. Critical guys. At the end of the day, we are all car people. We all love to actually modify our cars, change them, personalize them. That's really the whole point, right? To make something our own. That's something that we really enjoy doing. And the thought of not being able to modify them because you're worried so much about how it's going to affect your warranty. I hope this video kind of cleared things up at least a little bit for you on that. I'm sure I'll still be getting that question all the time that is this going to void my warranty or affect my warranty? But to give you a short disclaimer, basically, if you're doing some bolt-on modifications, in most cases, it's not going to affect your warranty unless we can directly prove that that part that you installed caused the premature failure of a factory part. That's pretty much the only way that which it can affect it. However, if you go deeper and affect actual engine modifications like performing a flash tune on the PCM or installing a camshaft, or you've been inside the engine for any reason, that's going to have a major effect on your warranty. All right, you guys, that is going to be it for this video. I hope you did learn something though. I hope you have a little bit more comfort in knowing the kind of things that you can do to your vehicle and not affect your warranty. In the meantime, if you wanna follow me on Instagram, it's at reignited.tx. You can go to our website at reignitedtx.com. We have these brand new hoodies that are available and the t-shirts if you wanna support the channel. Other than that, we have all sorts of other automotive content related here. You're gonna see videos popping up all over the place. And we'll see you next time on Reignited. So you shelled out a good $2,500, $3,500, $4,500 for a nice aftermarket warranty on your vehicle, and you have some aftermarket modifications on there. Well, what's going to happen now? You're screwed. <laughs>